We know that Britain has a role in Israel, but Israel has a role in Britain. Pro-Israel forces currently have control of NHS, Foreign Office, Home Office and Ministry of Defence data. Your data. Nigel Farage liked to talk about taking back control, but he wouldn't say anything about Israeli intelligence companies taking control of key functions of our intelligence and police services. He wouldn't say anything about the 12,000 US soldiers in this country. They don't want to take back control. They want to control you. What about Rishi Sunak, our Prime Minister? Well, his family company, Infosys, which was founded by his father-in-law and that his wife still has 500 million pounds worth of shares in, has many Israeli subsidiaries and hundreds of employees within Israel. Infosys signed a memorandum of understanding with the State of Israel in 2012 to develop relations and deepen cooperation. Infosys, which works on collecting biometric data, has also had a director until recently who was a veteran of Israeli military intelligence unit A200, Yuri Levine. Let's not forget that 44 whistleblowers from within unit A200 came out and said that this unit is surveilling the Palestinians to build compromise against them and blackmailing them with that information. Unit A200, don't forget that name. Because the very company that the British police use to hack phones in this country is Celebrite. This is an Israeli intelligence company which is headed by alumni of Unit 8200 in the Israeli military. The CEO of Celebrite has claimed that they have remote control access to all of the information procured through their products. The British police not only use this Israeli intelligence company to hack phones of their citizens, they also use something called NICE Systems as part of their investigations. Now, NICE Systems is a subsidiary of Israel's largest arms company, Elbit Systems. The level of integration between British and Israeli intelligence is unprecedented. Not only is this program used by British police, it's also used by the British Foreign Office. So you are talking about the outsourcing of Britain's external intelligence functions to elements of the Israeli intelligence agencies. When we look even further at this question, we wonder how companies like Celebrite could have got such a foothold in the British public sector. Well, there is an organization by the name of the UK Israel Tech Hub, which has played a very important role in all of this. It's based in the British Embassy in Israel, but it is staffed by former military and intelligence personnel from the Israeli regime. It's headed by the former Director General of the Israeli Finance Ministry, Haim Shani. Haim Shani was also simultaneously the director of Celebrite. But who funds the UK Israel Tech Hub? The UK Israel Tech Hub is funded by the British Foreign Office, by the British Embassy in Israel, and the British Department of Trade. The UK Israel Tech Hub exists for the sole purpose and with the stated objective of procuring public sector contracts in Britain for Israeli cyber and tech companies. British taxpayers fund an organization which is facilitating Israeli tech companies staffed by former Israeli intelligence personnel taking over public sector contracts in Britain, including in the NHS. Currently, the data for the British Home Office, the British Ministry of Defense, and the NHS is handled by a company called Oracle. Oracle was founded by Larry Ellison, the seventh richest man in the world and close friend of Benjamin Netanyahu. Larry Ellison is the largest funder of the Friends of the IDF charity in the history of the organization. In addition to that, this company, Oracle, offered the directorship to Benjamin Netanyahu, meaning that the Home Office, the Ministry of Defense, the Foreign Office, and the NHS has its data stored in a cloud run by a company that Benjamin Netanyahu was supposed to be the director of. And do you know how that deal was procured by Larry Ellison? Let me tell you a story. At the same time that Larry Ellison was bidding for this contract, he had a charity in this country. It was called the Larry Ellison Foundation. And do you know who was employed for half a million pounds a year at this charity? None other than the father-in-law of Prime Minister Boris Johnson. And guess what? 
When Larry Ellison's company, Oracle, procured the contract to store the data of the Ministry of Defense, the Home Office, the Foreign Office, and the NHS, the Larry Ellison Foundation was closed that very month. In addition to that, British Telecom is a key backbone of this country's infrastructure. It delivers telecommunications to millions of people. But why was it that the British government initiated a national security investigation into the latest shareholder takeover in British Telecom? Currently, the largest shareholder in British Telecom is Israeli French businessman Patrick Drahi. Now, when he took the largest share in BT, the British government launched an investigation in that purchase on the basis of national security. But what could possibly be their issue with Patrick Drahi? Patrick Drahi is the founder and owner of Israeli news channel I-24. I-24 was found by Haaretz newspaper to work as a proxy of the Netanyahu family. I-24 employs tens of former Israeli military and intelligence personnel. In addition to that, Patrick Drahi purchased the Liberation newspaper in France, founded by Jean-Paul Sartre, and replaced the editor with a former agent of Unit 8200. Patrick Drahi has also been involved in funding organizations that work on settlement in Jerusalem. Patrick Drahi is currently the largest shareholder in British Telecom. This is a question of sovereignty. How is it that a state which outsources key functions of its intelligence and police services that allows its data from key institutions to be given to former agents of a foreign power, how is it that a nation or a state that does that can have any claim to sovereignty? The question now is how can those in the British public who feel passionately about issues like patriotism justify their willingness to outsource these key functions of the state to Israeli intelligence cutouts? Palestine Action has launched a campaign which has seen two sites in this country for Israel's largest arms company, Elbit Systems, be shut down. The British Ministry of Defense cancelled £280 million worth of contracts with Elbit Systems because of Palestine Action activity, and they cited operational sovereignty. It's clear there are those in the British establishment who know what has happened here. The trilateral security state of the United States, Israel, and Britain renders Britain essentially a colony of the United States and Israel. Time to push back. Mainstream monopoly on information is breaking. And one of the symptoms of that process is the development of platforms like Double Down News. So it's absolutely vital that if we want to build an alternative media, which is people, not power centered, then we must do what we can to support platforms like Double Down News. So sign up to the Patreon now.